Hi guys, this is the first YouTube channel demo. And today I'm going to cover watercolor and color pencil techniques. So here's one of my color pencils. You'll notice that I'm using the uh, Prismacolor Premier and I'm looking at the back of the pencil, making sure that the back of the pencil has a core that's centered. And the reason I'm doing this is because if it's not centered, that means when you sharpen the pencil, it's more inclined to break. There's more of a chance that, you know, you break off the tip of it. And it's very frustrating. Anyone who's, who's used colored pencil knows that that's one of the most annoying things about using colored pencils. So when you buy a colored pencil or when you're using a colored pencil from your set, make sure that that isn't so. Now what I'm doing is just coloring in some of the darks and I'm using a sepia Prismacolor Premier pencil just to darken the eyes. There's many ways to use colored pencils. This is just the first basic way. Basic technique, just darkening up your values just to get a full range of those dark values. There are other ways to use colored pencils. Uh, obviously this technique is a combination of watercolor and colored pencils, mixed media. So what I did was I used some watercolor washes to paint this character. This is Pippin from Lord of the Rings. The actor is Billy Boyd. And I just put some light washes down before all this colored pencil business and just lift it up as you can see in the areas on his cloak and his shirt and his coat underneath just to get those lighter values to show up. Now here I'm showing a colorless wax blending tool. So if you buy one of those colorless wax blending tools uh, it's a great 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 thing to have because you can start you know, blending in all of those little areas of all those little spots uh, that were initially really grainy and really coarse when you put down the first you know, colored pencil marks. So what this is doing is just blending in those marks. And it's a really, really handy tool. You want to sharpen it with this sharpener, a very sturdy sharpener. You want to use this pretty much on all of your colored pencils. And the reason for that is it's more sturdy than a plastic sharpener and it won't break your pencils as much as a little plastic sharpener or something that looks like metal but isn't. So you want a heavy sharpener or an electric sharpener. So now I'm going back into those darks that I put in with the sepia but using that colorless wax blending tool to smooth everything out. So now what I'm going to do is something else. I'm going to try a different technique. And this I find to be even more useful than just you know throwing some colored pencils and dry colored pencil down. First, I'll start off with just some darks. Now I'm using the Prismacolor Light Umber. And in a minute, I'm going to add a little bit of water. So you can buy... Uh, that's the sort of built-in version of this. You can buy some watercolored pencils and put them down and just add water to them. But you can also do this with regular color pencils, which are wax-based pencils mixed with pigment, uh, pigment. So the key is to put some color down first. Here I'm putting some rather dark brown for his hair. And then I'm going to come back in with a little bit of water and move it around. And I'm not using this just because, you know, it's a watercolor colored pencil technique. But I'm using it because it sort of activates the paper. And it makes the paper a little wet, saturated, and moist enough so that you can move the colored pencil around so that it doesn't make those you know, little coarse marks. And you don't get that graininess. So here's my little brush. You can take any old brush. I'm dipping it in some water. 
and just putting it down to some clear water over the hair. So I'm setting up my wet surface, my more saturated, moist surface over the top of my little dark notes of brown and coarse grainy strokes. So I'm going to pick up that light umber again, same color I used for those little marks, the dark marks in the hair, and then I'm going to start moving around the existing colored pencil while also adding some more darks and colored pencil marks that are going to blend in with the water. So here you can see that it's almost like using a brush. Even though it's a dry media tool, it's a colored pencil, it's moving the paint around. And as you may know, you can do the same thing with the brodel technique. With pencil and what they call sauce or graphite powder. And if you add water, it's really, really going to soak into the page. And it looks, looks great because it looks almost like watercolor. And that was the base coat of this piece of art. So everything seamlessly blends together if you use this technique. I'm putting down some water first. And then coloring it over it with a colored pencil. And you may have to add some more water. As I'm doing over there on the right side of the hair. So I'm just darkening up that side, adding some more volume to the hair, some more form, so that the overall mass or shape of the hair has a sort of three-dimensional quality. It's more sculptural. And now I'm adding some water to the eye socket areas where I'm going to darken things up. I really want to bring out the nose, deepen the eye sockets, and make the eyes a little more symmetrical. Because in the, the initial piece or sketch, the eye on the right was a little off. So what I'm going to do is just put in a little uh, eye smile there. I show a little bit of his under lid. And then afterwards, I'm coming in and throwing down a little bit of color in the face so that I can bring his you know, flesh tones and face to life. And this is called a blush pink, the Prismacolor blush pink. All the, the pencils I'm using are Prismacolor. This one is a light peach. So I'm using that to lighten things up, also to blend. As most of you know, if you use a light colored pencil, even a dark, um, it blends really well on top of other color pencil. And now I'm coming back in with the colorless wax tool to blend in some of those coarser textures. The paper here is still wet. It's almost dry. It's not as, of course, wet as it used to be when I put the water down. But it's still a little wet, so even the, 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 the wax blending pencil, the colorless wax pencil, blends well at this point with whatever I put down. So I'm using that to sort of you know, blend things in, make some smoother transitions, bring in some of those darks from the side of his face, into the brow, just rounding things off, making his face more you know, curvy more sculptural and blending some shadows and just smoothing things out because you know I think that's the number one goal when you're working with colored pencil especially if you don't want some sort of uh, grainy texture you want to smooth things out because the watercolor that is going on top of is very very smooth you got some flat washes and some lifting in there so you want the the two mediums to feel consistent. So here I'm taking some Liquitex matte medium. And the reason I'm doing this is because when everything's dry, you can use a little brush, any brush, to just paint some matte medium over that to sort of seal everything in and then start anew. So it's almost like 
the first time you pick up the colored pencil and add your first color all over again after you paint on the Liquitex matte medium and it dries. So I'm sort of sealing in everything I've done on the face just to show you an example of how it works because I want to add some highlights. So I want to add a highlight to the little pupil on the left side. And what I'll do is just smooth everything out. You don't want too many puddles, especially if you're going to um, use a hair dryer or a little heat gun tool and dry things up really quickly so that you can continue to work. Which is what I'm going to do now. So, and this little handy tool is very inexpensive and easy to find. I'm just heating things up. So that's going to dry in a matter of seconds. And then it's like I have a fresh sheet of paper, like a clear shield over my colored pencil. In which case, I can take more colored pencil and put it down as though I was you know, starting over. Because it won't blend with what's underneath. So that's why I need it for highlights. You can take any sort of gouache or a jelly pen or something and do this, but if you want to just use only two mediums, colored pencil and watercolor, then this is the way to do it. And now, when I'm adding more colored pencil on top of that Liquitex matte medium, it's not blending with anything underneath. So it's sort of like a watercolor ground, which is a, a fairly new formula. So here I'm adding a little bit more water to Pippin's scarf because I want to darken up that area underneath his chin and bring out some more dark values so that his face really pops out because that's the focal point of this, this illustration. So here I'm using some, some dark gray, about a mid-tone, maybe a little darker as a sort of base, darker coat of color. And I need to go a little darker. So what I'm going to do is go grab uh, an even darker pencil, the same temperature. But now I can really, really pop that face out, bring it forward. I'm using a cool gray because he's got a very, very bluish, grayish scarf. And it works well with all the you know, more saturated blues below. I'm also leaving the tops of those two little bunches there underneath his chin. I'm letting some watercolor show through, in other words. I'm not coloring the entire scarf. Now I'm just darkening some little areas to make them look deeper behind the hair locks and on the sides of the face. Just a little bit of that color so I can bring some of that color down below up into the rest of the picture and the character's face. In order to seal your piece, you're going to want to use Kamar varnish or workable fixative. And the reason you seal a piece, any piece with any colored pencil in it is because of something called bloom. So if you don't seal it with one of these formulas or sprays, in a matter of a, a very short matter of time, it'll bloom and you'll seal this waxy material, which you don't want. So here's the finish. Added a little more of that blush pink. And then it's done.